Hey guys, in this video, I will explain to you that why impedance is represented by complex number. Is the quantity represented with an iota or under root of minus one is imaginary or does it really exist? Okay, let us see. Though you might have a good understanding of complex numbers, but let me give a quick recap which will be useful to understand this topic. So, what does a complex number do to another number? This is very important because we see that the basic formula of the Ohm's law is represented as V is equals to I into Z and the I and Z both are complex numbers. So why two complex numbers are getting multiplied? Let us see. Let's understand first in rectangular plane. Let's say we have a real number two and an imaginary number or a complex number two plus three iota. Now we want to multiply both the numbers. So what will happen? The first thing is that the real number will be multiplied and then the imaginary number. So we will get a 4 plus 6 iota. Here you will not be getting a good intuition of what is going on because this is the same thing which we do in two dimensional or three dimensional vectors also. But if we see in a polar plot, then we can get a better understanding. Okay, so let me first write a real number 2, which is represented by a vector like this. Then a complex number 4 plus 3 iota. The 2 is having an angle of 0 degree, and the 4 plus 3 iota is having an angle of 36, which you can calculate, I know, uh, with simple methods. The magnitude is given by c plus d square under root of this, and angle is tan inverse of d by c. Okay. So let us see that what will happen when we multiply both these things. So initially the vector A is getting scaled up by this vector. How much? By this magnitude, 10. And then it will be rotated across its axis by 36.86. So complex number is basically scaling of a vector or any, oh sorry, not a vector, a real number. Or a complex number so if one is multiplied to another it scales up and then it rotates the number okay let's see with another number this time both complex as we will be having voltage and current both in complex term we will not have real uh, voltage or real current all the time so let's say one vector is one plus one iota another vector is four plus three iota the multiplication of both is given by this simple formula. The final answer is 1 plus 7 iota. Now the magnitude is 7. So initially, the A vector is scaled up by this magnitude. Then it will be rotated across its axis up to 81.86 angle. So how and why this scaling up and rotation property of complex number is useful in representation of impedance. Let us see that. Well, before proceeding further, let us understand one thing that the mathematics is used to understand the world around us from the smallest world possible, the quantum world to the largest cosmos or the engineering applications. Everything is possible because of the mathematics. Let us see how it is useful for us in electrical engineering. Let me briefly explain how mathematical models are created. Let's start with how a model was created for simple resistance. We focus on two physical properties of an electrical system, the current and the voltage. When experiments were conducted, the voltage appearing across the resistance was proportional to the current. It showed a relationship like this. Uh, when voltage was increased, current increased following these patterns for different resistance or different elements these were the patterns that were observed so a linear equation can mimic this property or a similar kind of pattern can be observed with a linear equation which eventually came out as ohm's law which we use to represent the mathematical model of a simple electrical circuit with resistance so Similar to this, now we will observe that how 
the complex number was decided as the best function to represent impedance. Now let's see the behavior of our circuit when sinusoidal voltage waveforms are applied to it. I have created this simple simulation with this simple impedance. Initially, I am giving only resistance to this. So this is just a, an R circuit and the voltage is 220 voltage. Okay, so let me run this. Okay, let's start. Here you can see this is the voltage waveform and this is the current waveform. Both are starting from zero angle and both are having the peak at the same time and the zero also at the same time. So you can say that there is no phase lag between these two waveforms. So as expected, the resistance is not shifting the phase of current from voltage it is just changing its magnitude so if we plot this on a polar plot then we know that both the quantity will be on real axis let me show you with the zero angle okay so this is a simple code that i have created i will not explain this as this is not the purpose of the video here i have taken z is equals to 2 it means that only resistance part there is no inductance uh, I have not taken any inductance for now. So let me show you. Here, as you can see, this red dot is the voltage waveform. As uh, it is sinusoidal, so it is going to maximum magnitude, then it is returning back to zero, and then maximum. And I have taken the absolute value, so these are not going to uh, the negative uh, direction. And this is the current value, current value, this blue dot. So you can see that both are present on the zero angle axis. So both quantities are not phase shifted and does not have any any initial angle also. Okay, so now let us try to plot for an RL circuit. Or let's say initially just take inductance only, so it will be more clear. This is the value that I'm taking. Uh, I'm writing 2 pi into 50 in the denominator as when it will calculate the total reactance, then the value will be 2. So, to make the calculation more easy, so basically the reactance is 2 in this circuit. Now, if I'll run this, okay, so you can see the results here. So basically why the impedance were represented by the imaginary number or the complex number in first place comes from this property here. Let me stop it. Let me tell you how or why. So here as you can see that the peak of current is occurring exactly after 90 degree phase shift from voltage. So the property of inductor was observed and it was uh, showing that it is shifting the current from 90 degree but the, uh, the voltage appearing across its terminal were 90 degree ahead of the current that is flowing into this particular element so now only one mathematical function provides this kind of operation that it can okay now we wanted a mathematical function which can mimic or represent this property in mathematical equation form so we have just understood the complex numbers that if it is multiplied with other complex number or real number it not only it changes the magnitude of that number but it also shifts its phase so here we can see that in the numerator there is voltage and in denominator there is z will be complex quantity it will give a value of i which will be shifted from this original voltage quantity let me show you its representation in a polar plot okay here instead of 2 if i write 2i then this is pure inductance so now let me represent here as you can see you must have been studying 
these kind of plots where your voltage is on real axis and the current is lagging by the by 90 degree from the voltage so this is represented here this polar plot I think the visualization made it clear, but let me anyway explain it further that why impedance is represented by complex number. It is simply because the current flowing in an impedance is obtained by scaling, means by scaling the magnitude and rotating the voltage applied across the impedance. This property can be represented or I would say that can be obtained by a complex number only. And the answer to the question that was the imaginary part real physical quantity or it's just imaginary stuff so in graduation our teacher doesn't uh, well with in my case uh, no one has ever clearly mentioned everyone used to just say that this is imaginary quantity i don't know how i skipped this but yeah the imaginary part represented is not an imaginary quantity it's a real physical property which uh, what it does is it changes the face of current so if you see the equation right here uh, if voltage is not having any phase leak or la lead or lag then the imp let's say we are taking only inductance purely inductance no capacitance is present here no resistance then it will be represented by 90 plus 90 so that the current will finally be having this magnitude v by z and the angle of minus 90 lagging so and in terms of capacitance we have a leading current well how we decided that it will be plus in case of inductance and minus in case of capacitance it is because the inductor is having a property which lags the current from voltage so only a complex number with positive imaginary part can do this thing if uh, our basic formula was that voltage divided by impedance so it must be positive to lag the current by 90 degree and in case of capacitance it must be negative to obtain a leading current okay if you still have any doubt you can comment in the comment box uh, comment box i will reply thank you